Ladies and gentlemen, the subject of the lecture of today is climate change, with the growing floods, the reasons and the measures. Since decades, climate is becoming warmer and not colder, and since decades the quantity and the intensity of the floods are rising in the world. Concretely said, more and more heavy floods can be counted on all continents, in Europe, in Asia, in the both Americas and also in Australia. First, the media called these heavy floods a flood of the century. But soon came out that the century only consists in five years yet. Which factors are coming together with all this? The governments, the technical universities and the sociologists have to know this immediately all around the world. Point one. Climate can change and since decades we have climate warming. Eventually also the winds and the monsoons will change. Point two. Industrial society is going on burning the fuels of the earth of all oil, coal and gas. And this is also a contribution to climate warming, the greenhouse effect inclusive. The climate change with the point one and two is bringing higher temperatures and more humidity and therefore the clouds are absorbing more humidity and the rainfalls are more and more intensive. But the climate is only one factor of the story because there are more facts for being detected. Point number three. From the first civilizations until today the empires and the industrial countries have destructed many forests and by these many forests which were a water reserve were destructed. That means that the rains are not stored in the forest anymore like before, but the rainwater is coming, often passing the compressed earth of the so-called modern agriculture, coming directly into the rivers, and therefore the rivers are full very soon. This is the case above all in Europe, in North America, and in Asia, in China. Point four. Not only the forests were destructed in masses, but in the industrial countries the rivers also were manipulated. First, the rivers had meanders. They had wave lines, like this, with a wide riverbed about 100 or 150 meters large. Then, since about the year 1700, the engineers and the governments of the industrial and capitalist countries came, mostly the kings and emperors, and they did the following. They channeled the rivers systematically and lowered them. They destructed the riverside forests systematically and they filled up the meanders with earth. And at the end, they constructed levees against the floods. And by this the engineers and the government meant that they had won near grassland and building land. And all would be good like this. This channeling of the rivers in Europe and in North America was performed by a level perfection. And therefore there hardly are any rivers with natural meanders anymore. There are natural rivers yet with their meanders in so-called not developed countries yet in the Amazon Basin or in the Dominican Republic, for example. Look on the maps. And in Europe, there are some meanders yet, for example in Switzerland, in Bremgarten, at the Royce River, or in Anglofin, at the Tour River. But such meanders are very rare in Europe of today. And you have to know, Mississippi had no meanders yet. All was rotten. In the region of Thun in Switzerland, for example, the engineers meant that they could dry out the river completely, manipulating the Simi River in a tunnel directly to a lake, to the lake of Thun, in German Tunisia. The result was a canyon, and now the lake of Thun is full during every strong rain, and is converting Thun into a public free swimming pool regularly. Well, often there was constructed a motorway inside the channel to a sterilized river, and the river also got the noise of the cars. There are many examples for this, for example, at Rhine River in Switzerland between Sargans and Lake Constance, or at the Chino River in South Switzerland between Biosca and Benetola, or at Dry Tom River in Germany in Freiburg and Breisgau, just on both sides of the river. This was really a perfect work there in Freiburg and Breisgau. In some cases, there were also bears and 
hydroelectric facilities built in the river, regulating the levels of the water, or for current production. Well, the engineers thought that any flood would be eliminated by this system, but it was not like this. Also, some swamps were dried out, eliminating malaria and mosquito plagues, winning land. That means these swamps also were lost as a deposit of rainwater. And as point number five, there is the sealing of the landscape with houses and streets. By this, the water is coming faster into the rivers, and the floods in the lower parts of the rivers are warm. And as a last one is number six, because with the climate warming, also the snow line is rising, and in winter the Great Depressions are not only bringing more rain and snow, but also more rain is flowing down. So, let's make a little summary of all these factors for the heavy floods of nowadays. We have first point, climate change with more rain. Second point, the provoked climate change with more rain by burning of fuels. Third point, elimination of forests. Fourth point, colonizations of the rivers. Fifth point, sealing of landscapes and compressed earth by modern agriculture. And sixth point, the rising snow line. These varied factors are what are provoking the heavy floods and not only climate change alone. The forests are expanding again in Middle and Western Europe, but that's not enough. And the idea that the levees along the rivers would be a protection is only partially right, because with every little flood within the levees, the river beds, all in all, they are getting higher and higher in many cases. The river beds are piling up its layers. And therefore the river beds are always more little when there is no operation cleaning up the material. And the idea that a channeled river is less dangerous because the water is getting away fast, that's a wrong idea. Because in the lower part of the rivers there will be heavy when in all feeding rivers the water is also flowing fast. That's why we have many heavy floods in Europe, at Rhine River or in Poland, in the USA, above all at the Mississippi River and in China, and since a short time also in Australia. Germany and Italy say thank you when channel rivers of Switzerland are bringing much water in a short time, or when there is a flood in Budapest with Danube River, these waters come from the channel rivers in Germany and in Austria, etc. Missing forests, the sealing of the landscape together with the compressed earth of modern agriculture and the rising snow line in winter, all these facts are more factors provoking the heavy floods. Therefore, we see that the modern deluge of nowadays mostly is homemade. The same facts we can see in tropical territories, for example in South America and Ecuador or in the north of Colombia, or also in tropical Africa. A really new fact is that the monsoons and the winds are changing too. And therefore, the rain of the monsoon is coming down in other countries where there has never been a monsoon before. For example, in Pakistan and Kashmir lately, where partly do not at all exist big riverbeds yet. So, a big riverbed has to be excavated there, so a riverbed will exist and floods will be prevented. And the towns at the coastline of the sea have to foresee that the level of the sea will rise by two meters within 100 years. Many beaches have gone already, and the tube of New York will be the next case. So, we ask, which are the measures which have to be taken preventing the coming up of more floods and the rising sea? Point number one, change to renewable energies. And for protection of floods in the continents, there are many measures more possible. Point number two, give back the forests to the nature, so the forests can be the water deposit again as they have been before. Point number three, the riverbeds of the rivers have to be enlarged. The riverbeds have to be doubled, or better, have to be tripled. Land has to be expropriated and has to be given back to the rivers. 
Also, point number four is possible. Where is a special nature, a sidearm can be excavated as a reserve. So the sidearm is used during the flood arranging the waters into rivers. When there are towns with rivers up to 20 meters large, also a water tunnel is possible, preventing floods in a town. This action was done, for example, in Switzerland in Longfall, and it functions very well. Therefore, in the USA, the Mississippi River should, give, should be given back its large riverbed with its meanders, and in the region of New Orleans, a new sidearm of Mississippi should be excavated. Or in England, the rivers should be given back their large riverbeds, or some water tunnels should be constructed preventing any floods in the English towns. In Switzerland, it would be possible to reinstall the line of the Simian River. In Germany, in Cologne, one could excavate the second arm of the river. Or in Switzerland, in Zurich, an additional water tunnel could be installed. The definition of flooded territories during a flood probably is not enough for the next 500 years. Add to this, a flooding of the land always brings mud destruct and the harvests, and there are tragic accidents with animals which cannot take their flights. Therefore, flooded territories principally are not very good. Add to this, there is another point. Five. Flat roofs and terraces should be greened above all the flat roofs. This will have the effect that there will be not only a better quality of life in the top floors of the houses, but the effect is that the rainwater is held by the earth and is not flowing down. For this, the flat roofs have to be strong enough holding the wet earth. The water of the sloping roofs in the countryside can be distributed on the pastures and therefore the rivers will not be charged with this water either. Point number six can be a change of the streets. Half of the streets can be converted, so only the half will be bitumenized. Respectively, the streets can be converted so they are no race courses anymore, but half of them are planets. With a well constructed bicycle path and sidewalk, and the cars have to circulate on two bitumenized wheel paths, with the green part in the middle with gravel or pass grass paper. Plants can complete the treatment. And the point number seven concerns the weirs, which have to be constructed in a manner so in the case of doubt they can be opened totally. Point number eight could be the breaking up of the compressed soil of modern agriculture. Imagine that earthworms are important for this. These eight measures in a package should prevent any heavy flood. Now, at the end of the lecture, we repeat the list of measures in a short form. Point number one, change to renewable energies, evading any burning of fuel. Point number two, more forests and this positive rainwater. Point number three, the channeled rivers have to get back their large riverbeds. The riverbeds have to be doubled or tripled with expropriations. And where are new rains which never have been before, new riverbeds have to be installed. Point number four, one can excavate sidearms or water tunnels. Point number five, flat roofs of thatch terraces can be greened, and the water of the sloping roofs in the countryside can be distributed to pastures. Point number six, the streets can be converted so only the half is pitonized. Point number seven, wares have to be accepted so they can be opened without limits. Point number eight, the compressed soil of modern agriculture has to be broken up so the rain can enter the soil. A big factor are earthworms. With these measures, there should be no heavy floods anymore. The whole issue is an integrated continental issue. The countries have to collaborate. Thank you for your attention.